Hi, in this video, we'll talk about Zika virus infection, which is a mosquito borne viral infection, and the common symptoms are very similar to a viral fever like headache, fever, chills, etc. So, here is a fact sheet for Zika virus infection. Many people might show mild symptoms, while others might not even show any symptoms. It is especially dangerous for pregnant woman and her baby. Your doctor might take blood or urine sample to get a test done for Zika. There is no specific medication yet for Zika, neither there is any vaccination. And it is not as infectious as COVID-19. So Zika is generally spread by the mosquito bite, such as Aedes in aegypti or other species of Aedes mosquito. Let me remind you that this species of mosquito is also responsible for the spread of dengue, which is another virus viral infection. Now, the mosquitoes are very active during the daytime. So, there are multiple ways by which Zika infection could transmit. One of the way is blood transfusion. Second way, if you are affected by Zika virus, then your partner might get affected via Zika virus while doing sex. And Zika can be passed from infected mother to its baby. Now let's say you are in a crowd and you are infected with Zika virus. So this Aedes mosquito might bite you and with its blood meal might carry the virus and while it is in biting another person that particular person might get infected. So from one person to another person, it gets transmitted with the help of this mosquito. So saving ourselves from mosquito bite is a good way of prevention. Recently in India, 14 cases are detected in Kerala and several cases are detected in West Bengal inside India. So it's kind of worrisome whether it's going to create another pandemic like situation. But let me remind you, Zika is not as infectious as COVID, but the concern still remains because India is kind of like a hot and humid climate. So mosquitoes are prevalent in many states across India. And if mosquitoes are more, the probability that these kind of virus borne uh, diseases would be spreading is more. So we need to be very cautious about mosquito bites, especially during the monsoon. Before even this, around 2015, there was a report of Zika outbreak in Brazil. And during that outbreak, there was incidence of microcephaly in Brazil. Microcephaly is a fancy term for babies who are born with abnormally small head. Generally, the baby's head would look like this. And microcephaly would lead to a reduction in the head size and the baby would look somewhat like this and in this video we'll describe how Zika virus can induce microcephaly like symptoms. So let's talk about the general symptoms of Zika virus infection. So it's very normal, it's very likely uh, that Zika virus would give you fever, headache, rashes in arms, joint pain, and these symptoms are pretty overlapping with any viral fever like COVID, like rhinoviruses, etc. Now, Zika virus is a cousin of dengue. Both of them belong to the family of Flaviviridae, and both of them are transmitted via Aedes aegypti mosquito. So, Zika virus can infect several cell types in our body ranging from brain cells such as astrocytes, skin cells, dendritic cells which is an immune cell and even sperms. More importantly, Zika virus can transmit from mother to the fetus. That means it can cross placenta which is a big concern. Zika virus is a complicated virus. So if we Cut a cross section across Zika virus, we can see 
the capsid proteins and inside the capsid protein there is positive sense RNA. Now Zika virus enters the cell by attaching to specific receptor present on the cell and it, the cell engulfs the Zika virus. Inside the cell the mRNA genome of the Zika virus is translated which would lead to production of several viral proteins which is necessary for viral particle assembly and the life processes of that virus. Now this particular mRNA with the help of another template gets replicated and many copies of these genome is generated. Later on this genome and the viral proteins are assembled and a new, new viral particle leaves the cell and in this process the cells get injured. Now let's talk about how our immune system can fight back Zika virus infection. So our immune system is pretty intelligent. So whenever there is a Zika infection our immune system or any other cell type in our body secretes one type of messenger known as interferons. These interferons are alarming signal which tells the nearby cell that there is a viral infection so get ready for combat. So the nearby cell after receiving this information would be more ready to fight these infectious viruses. So this is how our body fights back generally. Other than that our immune cells produce antibody against Zika viruses. So these antibody would coat the Zika virus all over and several cell types which can recognize these antibodies such as neutrophils, macrophages, natural killer cells, dendritic cells would ultimately engulf these virus and eliminate them from our body. This is how our body fights back. Especially the concern is when Zika virus can cross placenta, it can enter the fetal circulation and it it is known that Zika virus affects the brain cells. Let me be more specific. So let us talk about how Zika virus can cause microcephaly. Microcephaly is a birth defect which is characterized by abnormally smaller head size and the head size is kind of significantly reduced in these Zika induced microcephaly patients. So it has been shown now that how Zika virus can possibly cause microcephaly and the answer came from human stem cell derived brain organoids. Now brain organoids are mini brains which kind of shows signatures like a fetal brain. So brain organoids would mimic fetal brain development. Now if Zika virus is added in these organoid culture while developing then the Zika infected organoid look abruptly diminished in size and upon molecular examination scientists have found that the stem cells which generally amplify and form neurons in the brain are really affected in these Zika virus infected organoids. So the stem cells generally amplify their number and then produce neurons. But these stem cells are highly affected by Zika virus which lead to death of these stem cells. And as a result, cortical thickness is reduced which can explain why Zika virus can lead to microcephaly or smaller head size. So, let, let's summarize what we have learned so far. First of all, let me tell you there is no vaccine for Zika. So, not getting Zika is the biggest uh, concern right now. Prevention is always better than cure. So, so far we have learned that Zika virus is a mosquito borne viral disease. We also learned how Zika infection can spread in human body, what are the cell types that get affected. We also learned how our body fight back Zika. And finally, we understood how stem cell derived organoid 
helped the scientists to unravel the mystery that how Zika can cause microcephaly. Even if we know how Zika can affect our brain development, but we don't have a treatment for this yet. I hope this video was useful to you. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also support me in Patreon. And if you're an Indian viewer, you can scan this QR code and help me with Bhim UPI. A small contribution from your side is always appreciated. Thank you for listening and do let me know in the comment how you like my video. Thank you.